Hello guys! In this lesson, I'll talk about blocks, custom content panes and fillable panel panes. I know that in our second lesson, you have the URL in this video's description, I said something like content types are how site editors can input content on a Drupal site, and also that all posts that exist on a site are instances of a content type. I also said that you should create a content type, when you know that you would have multiple nodes of the same type but with different data. But what about those uh, small pieces of text that do not classify as a node? For example, some text above the contact us form, or some call to action small parts of content, uh, or any other piece of content for which creating a new content type would be too much. For those cases, we need something else. Blocks, custom content panes and fillable panel panes comes to our help. Let's start with blocks. A block is a Drupal container object. You can use blocks to hold content or website functions, such as the login fields, or a list of the recent nodes, or online user, etc. You can position uh, them in your website by placing them uh, inside of regions from the blocks page, or from inside a panel. You can also load them from templates using PHP code. There are several different types of blocks that can be used to develop your website. We have standard and system blocks. Some of them are dynamic, like recent comments or online users, and some are special system blocks, like login or search. Also, all Drupal menus are generated as blocks. Then we have static or embedded content, like text, HTML, images, maps or other content uh, material from the web. And in the end, we have dynamic content, modules and features such as views, media gallery and other created blocks. Custom content panes are the CTools content types. CTools content types are one type of plugin that the CTools modules provides. You can do a lot of things with them, but only from code. From interface, from my point of view, they are somewhat related to blocks. They have body and title, and you can place them from a panel where you want. You can also group them in categories, so that they are easier to find in the panel add content pop-up. Now. Fillable panel panes. From the start, you see the word fillable. This means that you can add fills to them. I know, you'll say something like, why use them since you can add fills to content types? The idea of them is to have something more complex than a block, but less complex than a content type. For example, you or your client want to have on homepage a block with an image, and over that image a title, a short description, and a link. You can create a block or a custom content pane from Drupal interface and let the admin in charge of entering the HTML into the body part. But what if the admin does not know that well HTML? Or what if uh, the admin forgets to close an element? Well, the whole page breaks. In this case, you can use fillable panel panes and add uh, fields for image, title, link title and URL, and body, and then uh, do the whole HTML and CSS part from the template file. It's really easy to style fillable panel panes from template files and also to load them inside another template file, let's say in a content type template. You can even translate them. The only nice thing is that you cannot export the created entity. I mean, you can export the structure, but the actual entity not so much. If you can just uh, export and import your database, then you are safe. If not, well, not that safe. I mean, you can still recreate them into the production site and rename the template file with a new ID, but it's messy. Ok, enough theory for now, let's view these things inside Drupal. For this, you'll need to have a Drupal instance. I'm using Drupal 7 and I've showed you how to create it in our first lesson. You'll find the URL in this video's description. Blocks, we have them by default in Drupal. Custom content panes. We've activated that module in our first Drupal lesson. It's a sub-module of CTools module. We don't have fillable panel panes. This is the modules page. Download the needed version and add it to sites, all, modules, contrib. Let's log in with an admin user. I'll use the one created in lesson 2 part 1 video. Now, let's go to Modules page and activate this new module. Custom 
content panes are already activated. Same goes with blocks, you can't even deactivate them. So, only one module, save configuration. Ok, let's see now. Panels. Let's delete this. There, foldable panels pane are enabled. Now, let's check custom content pane page. Under structure, go to custom content panes. By default, there are no custom content panes. You can add or import one. For the import part, you just have to add the content pane code. Let's add one. So, administrative title for Spain. Description not needed. Even if you do not add a category, the pane is still placed under one. Let's just type first panel pane. Title again not needed. Body. Let's just type blah blah text for now. You can also change the text format in case you want to limit some elements. You have filtered text, full HTML and plain text. You can also use context keywords inside the body. Save and we're done. See, it already appears inside the table. Name, title and category. As operations we have edit, disable, delete, clone and export. This is how it looks like if you export it. And this is the code that you should add into the import text area. See, it has everything. Body, category and everything that you've added. Now back and click edit. On top you get the machine name and the data that you've entered. Now let's check blocks. Under structure, click blocks. This is the official blocks page. As you can see, blocks are grouped by regions. You define your regions into your Drupal theme. So, different themes can have different regions. You can drag and drop blocks from one region to another and back. Let's change this. You can configure blocks. You can add a block title, the region where you should resign. You can say on what pages to appear, if it should appear on all pages or on just the ones listed. You can show blocks only on some content types. You can also limit the block's appearance by user role, or let the user customize uh, the appearance of the block. By default, they are not customizable. Now, back to blocks page. As you can see, after the region part, you get a list of disabled blocks. These are by default on every Drupal new instance. They just exist and are not placed anywhere. Let's see the add block form. Looks similar to custom content panes. It has a block title field, a block description that is required, a block body text area, region settings and visibility settings. Let's open also the custom content pane form. See, blocks are more complex and requires more fields to be completed. Now, let's check fieldable panel panes. So, structure, then click fieldable panel panes. This page looks like the custom content panes page. Same links to add and import. But here you also get a settings tab. 
If you do not know what they mean, you should let them by default. You can also choose to make the fillable pane available to blocks page. Back to the list page. You have here an already created fillable pane. As operations, you have list, add entity, edit, delete, export, manage fields, just like a content type, and manage display, again just like a content type. Click Edit. You get a form to change the administrative fillable panel pane title and also the administrative body. On the List tab, we do not have anything. On the Add tab, we only get Title, the Admin Title and Description, and the Reusability tab where you can say if the pane should be reusable. You can also give the pane a category. On the Delete tab, you can delete the pane. You can also export it, but it only exports the main structure, not like the custom content panes export. Then, Manage Fields tab is the most important one. Here, you can add multiple fields, just like in a content type. By default, you only get a title field. Let's add a new field. Better yet, let's add an already existing one. Let's add main image field. Here, we get the same field settings form. Click Save. Now let's add Tags field. Again, the normal field form. Click Save. On Manage Display tab, we can choose the available displays and what fields to display for them. Looks like the Manage Display tab from Content Types. Let's go to Add tab. Now we also have the main image and tags field. Even though fieldable content panes look similar to content types, on the Generate Content page they do not appear. If we look under uh, Configuration, then Development, we cannot find the link to generate fieldable panel panes. This means that you will have to manually add your content, but since it is supposed that you will have just a few items, it is not needed to bulk generate. Let's delete the main image and add the images field. I want to show you how the library tabs looks like now, after you generated some content. We've generated content in Lesson 2 Part 2. So, just click Delete, Delete again. This action cannot be undone and all of your data entered in this field will be lost. Add the Images field. Choose everything from Browser Plugins. Unlimited Values and Save. Now, on the Add tab, let's add a record. Complete title, tags, and for images, click Browse. Upload form is the same, but on Library tab you get several images. These images were created with Devil module when you've generated content. My files is still empty because you did not actually upload anything. Choose an image. Now you can add another or edit delete this one. Add a new administrative title and description. You can also add the category. Save. Let's go to the List tab. 
and here you have your paint. How to use them? Just go into a panel and place them where you would like. We're done for now guys, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to get my new videos. Also, please ask me any question that you have in the comment area. Bye now!